The film begins with Nayeon, the leader of a cool marketing team in Sungsu. One day, she has a meeting with the CEO of Exa Beauty to chat about a new marketing plan for their products. There, Nayeon shares a super smart idea, and she impresses the CEO so much that he decides to team up with her. The CEO is pretty excited because he's about to launch a brand new product at a temporary shop, also known as a pop-up store. He picks an old shoe factory that's nearly out of business for the location. But turns out, the factory has been sold, yet the workers don't want to leave because they need the job to make ends meet. To make things more complicated, there are whispers that Exa Beauty's products might be harming the environment and that they test on animals. Now, Nayan and her crew have to sort out these tricky problems if they want their project to succeed. Long story short, the shoe craftsmen were not happy about being kicked out of their workplace, so they started to protest. During this big fuss, Unho, an intern at Nayan's marketing agency, decided to join the craftsmen and stand up with them. Because of this, he ended up in a bit of trouble. Nayan, who is Unho's boss and also kind of like a big sister at work, had a serious talk with him. She wasn't happy about what he did. But Unho believed he was doing the right thing. He felt that as a marketer, he should think about more than just selling products. He should care about how things are done, especially about the environment. He discovered that Exa Beauty's products might not be so great for the planet and told Nayan they should think twice about working with them. Nayan, however, didn't agree. She told him that their job as marketers is to promote products and make sure they sell, no matter what. Back in college, Unho always went to classes taught by Nayan about marketing. He really looked up to her as a role model. But they had different ways of thinking about marketing. Nayan believed in making products that lots of people would love. But Unho thought it was more special to make just one person really love a product, like in a romantic relationship. Instead of getting mad at Unho for thinking differently, Nayan invited him to meet the CEO of Exa Beauty. She wanted to prove to him that her client was innocent. The CEO even promised that all the bad things people were saying about their products were lies made up by their competitors. After the meeting, Nayan asked Unho to go to the Exa Beauty factory and gather some information. The next day, Nayan, from Songsu Agency, went to Seji Company for a big meeting with the top bosses. Even though she has to deal with a tough boss, Nayan stays cool and handles it well. She's super smart and everyone knows it, which can make some people feel a bit intimidated. But while Nayan is doing great at work, her love life is a whole different story. She's never dated anyone and she keeps to herself around her co-workers. Back at the office, Nayan runs into Chung Wu, who heads the art team at Sungsu Agency and has had a crush on her for a while. Later on, it's Nayan's assistant, Yumi's turn to talk to Chung Wu. But poor Yumi has feelings for him too, even though she knows he doesn't feel the same. It hurts even more when Chung Wu explains he only sees her as a friend. The next day, Yumi ran into Nayan and got treated poorly, as usual. Even though Nayan often acts this way, Yumi stays patient. But now, Yumi knows Chung Wu likes Nayan, and that makes her really jealous. That's when Yumi starts to hate Nayan. Long story short, after getting advice from a senior named Hee Jung to be careful with Exa Beauty, Nayan contacts the CEO again to check if their company is really innocent. This time, the CEO doesn't give a clear answer, but he promises to speak well of Nayan to her bosses. Nayan, who cares more about moving up at work than sticking to her principles, decides to take the risk and try to get a contract with Exa Beauty. While visiting the Exa Beauty factory, Unho didn't notice anything strange. But when he went back at night to grab his forgotten phone, he stumbled upon a stray rabbit. Following his curiosity, Unho found a storage room where animals were kept locked up for testing. He realized that Exa Beauty wasn't being kind to the environment and was using animals in a cruel way for their research. Soon after, Unho told Nayan everything and showed her evidence that the rumors about Exa Beauty were true. But instead of stopping the project, Nayan, with her uncaring attitude, decided to ignore the problem. She even deleted all the evidence from Unho's phone. This left Unho feeling really let down by Nayan. But she didn't seem to care at all. In the evening, Nayan paid a visit to the CEO of Exa Beauty and showed him the problems she had discovered. Before deleting the evidence from Unho's phone, Nayan secretly saved the video to her own phone. She used this proof to strike a new deal. There, Nayan asked the CEO to pay extra money as part of their contract, in exchange for keeping the matter quiet. The next day, Nayan became really famous after signing a deal with Exa Beauty. They agreed to sell their products exclusively through Nayan's agency, Songsu. Meanwhile, Unho, who was keeping an eye on the situation, felt powerless to do anything. On the other hand, the shoemakers at the factory weren't being treated fairly, so they refused to leave. At that time, Nayan realized that the launch date for the pop-up store was getting close, so she worked hard to minimize any bad publicity to protect Exa Beauty's reputation. 
She also offered the shoemakers more money until they finally agreed to leave. But their leader decided to keep fighting and became more vocal about his opinions. In the end, Nayan had a face-to-face -face meeting with the craftsman, but things took a scary turn when he threatened her with a gun. At that time, Unho jumped in to protect her and got hurt in the process. Luckily, people recorded the whole thing, and the craftsman panicked and ran off. But turns out, Nayan actually provoked the craftsman on purpose to make him look bad in front of everyone. She didn't expect Unho to step in and get hurt. In the end, Nayan admitted she planned everything and used Unho a bit. She knew from the start that Exa Beauty was in trouble, so she sent Unho to find evidence that she could use to her advantage. Because of this, Nayan was able to get more money for the craftsmen and kick them out of the factory. Unho was shocked to see how far Nayan was willing to go to make her project succeed. After securing the building, Nayan and the art team, led by Chung Wu, worked together to design the Exa Beauty pop-up store. Finally, launch day arrived. The CEO of Exa Beauty showed up and was super impressed because everything went exactly as Nayan planned. But Yumi, fueled by jealousy, started scheming against Nayan. And then, out of nowhere, the shoe craftsman who had left before suddenly showed up. In a quieter moment away from the crowd, Unho asked Nayan to hire him as a permanent employee. At that time, Nayan couldn't say no because Unho had a copy of the evidence about Exa Beauty. When Nayan asked Unho what he really wanted, he surprised her by saying he wanted her in her soul. Meanwhile, a mysterious person was spotted uploading documents online. The next day, Nayan woke up and saw the news on TV that Exa Beauty's big secret was out, and the CEO got arrested. Meanwhile, Songsu Company tried to protect its reputation by firing Nayan, who had signed a deal with Exa Beauty. At that moment, Nayan couldn't stop thinking about who had leaked the video about Exa Beauty. She went back to the pop-up store and found a phone with evidence that Unho had thrown away earlier. Just then, someone in a rabbit mask started chasing her, trying to harm her. Then, Nayan ended up falling into a water decoration and almost drowned. After the scary incident, Nayan woke up in the hospital, but something strange had happened. Shockingly, she was stuck inside Unho's body. She remembered the moment when Unho had said he wanted her and her soul, and they shared a kiss. Then Unho got rid of the evidence by throwing away his phone. After the strange incident, Nayan discovered that her body was in the ICU, but she didn't realize that Unho was stuck inside her body. This crazy situation grabbed Nayan's attention, and she had to adjust to living Unho's life. She couldn't go back to her apartment, so she ended up staying in Unho's attic, which was full of plants. Nayan also had to get used to wearing men's clothes and living a regular life at the agency. When Nayan showed up at the office in Unho's body, everyone thought Unho had changed. He seemed more confident and open about his feelings, and he had a different kind of charm. Nayan was shocked to learn that she had been replaced as team manager by Yumi. Plus, Unho got hired as a permanent worker, but he was put in a group of underdogs. This group was supposed to be disbanded because they weren't very good at their jobs, but Yumi kept them around to cover up her own shortcomings. She also had a personal dislike for Unho, whom she thought was too close to Nayan. The next day, Nayan saw on the news that someone tried to take their own life, but it was actually an attempted murder. At that time, Nayan started suspecting a few people, including Mr. Numbiel, a co-worker who doesn't like her, Yumi, her assistant, director Ye, her boss, the leader of the shoe craftsman, and Unho, who had scratch marks on his hands. Then, Nayan remembered scratching the attacker's hand before falling, which became an important clue. Meanwhile, to fix the agency's reputation and help the shoe factory they kicked out, Songsu Agency came up with a rebranding plan. They wanted to make local shoes more appealing to the public so the craftsmen could get back to work. Then, Yumi gave Nayan, who was in Unho's body, the task of working on this project. Soon after, Nayan visited the factory and met the leader of the craftsmen, Ji Wook, who also had scratch marks on his hands. But Nayan didn't accuse anyone yet. She just talked about the rebranding project and left. Back at Songsu Agency, Nayan now works in a basement office with a team of underdogs. These guys have had their fair share of problems. There's young AE, who's known for shoplifting and overusing office resources. Then there's Rex, a tough guy who's rumored to work as a cross-dresser in a bar. And lastly, there's Jenny, a typical Gen Zer who's addicted to live streaming. But Nayan isn't surprised by her quirky team because she's the one who sent them there in the first place. Soon after, Nayan tries to figure out who's trying to harm her. She checks out the workplaces of her suspects but doesn't find any clues. After that, she visits her own comatose body in the hospital and temporarily moves it to the VIP ward. She starts using Unho's credit card for all her transactions. The next day at work, the underdog team faces teasing from Yumi, who starts acting like she's in charge. 
Nayan tries to stay calm, but when she sees her teammates not standing up for themselves, she snaps and insults them, calling them losers who deserve the teasing. Her words really hurt them, but Nayan doesn't care because she thinks it's the truth. Feeling frustrated, Nayan goes to the VIP room to see her body. After thinking it over, she believes that the soul swap happened because of a kiss. When Nayan tried to kiss her own body, Chengwu suddenly showed up and asked what Unho was up to, not realizing Nayan was still inside his body. There, Nayan explained that Unho was her boyfriend, but Chengwu didn't believe her and scolded him. Nayan, still in Unho's body, asked Chengwu why he hadn't done anything to help her before she ended up in a coma. This made Chengwu angry, and he grabbed Nayan by the collar. There, Nayan noticed scratch marks on his hands, adding him to her list of suspects. But she still wasn't sure why he might want to hurt her, especially since he had feelings for her. Arriving at Unho's house, Nayan continues her search for who might want to harm her. She thinks Yumi has a strong motive, maybe wanting her job. But Nayan remembers the attacker she met was a man. She suspects the attacker and the mastermind might be different but have the same goal. The next day at work, Nayan sees her co-workers are still mad about her behavior. She doesn't care much, but she realizes her actions are tarnishing Unho's nice image. Later, Nayan goes back to the factory and meets Ji Wook. She learns he wasn't the one trying to harm her. Even though he admits he doesn't like her, he swears he never wanted to hurt her. In the evening, Ji Wook went to the factory to have a drink. When he heard a noise, he found Nayan had fallen into the water. Ji Wook rushed to help her and hurt his hand in the process. He used Nayan's phone to call for help. To thank Ji Wook, Nayan decided to take the shoe factory project seriously. Soon after, Nayan met Rex, who was working on the side. She didn't apologize but invited him to collaborate and promised a gift. At that time, Nayan's plan was to make the shoe factory popular among marginalized groups, especially transgender women like Rex, who struggle to find shoes in their size. Handmade shoes could solve that problem because they can be custom-made. Even though it caused controversy, bringing in the transgender community, Nayan succeeded in showing that handmade shoes can be special and inclusive. Then, with Jenny's help, the rebranding project became a hit online, which upset Yumi. Meanwhile, Nayan was surprised to see how dedicated her underdog team was to the project. She realized she had underestimated them. Back at the hospital, Nayan's real body had a seizure after someone in a rabbit mask visited her. Upon knowing that, Nayan, in Unho's body, rushed to investigate. At the hospital, Nayan spotted the masked person and tried to catch them. But when she did, her head started hurting, and the person got away. The doctor said Nayan was just in shock, but then her finger moved, hinting at something more. Some time later, Yumi talked to the press about Nayan's wanting to hurt herself. There, she showed them edited CCTV footage that made it look like Nayan had an accident while drunk. At that moment Yumi did this to protect her position and the company's image. After that, Nayan, still in Unho's body, confronted Yumi. She demanded to know if Yumi was involved in the murder attempt. But their meeting was interrupted by Unho, who suddenly showed up at the agency in Nayan's body. Unho was shocked to see his body moving on its own, while Nayan realized their souls had been swapped. Then, Nayan quickly explained to Unho what happened and told him to go home so he wouldn't attract attention. Soon after, Unho went home, still trying to figure out what was going on. Shortly after, Nayan came with all her files and asked Unho, who was in her body, to memorize everything so he could get used to her life. Then, Nayan asked why Unho ended up in the hospital with her. There, he explained that he had gone to the agency and saw Nayan's notes about the shoe factory. Worried about her, he went to the factory but fainted and hurt his hand when he fell. At the same time, an ambulance came to help Nayan, and that's how Unho ended up in the hospital with her. Upon spotting a photo of a girl at Unho's house, Nayan assumed he had a girlfriend and was being unfaithful. But Unho denied it, explaining the girl was just an old friend. Nayan believed him and removed Unho from her list of suspects. She invited him to her apartment, where she couldn't initially get past the guards with his body. But with Unho in her body, they solved that problem. At that time, Unho was amazed by Nayan's fancy home, and they decided to live together until they sorted out the soul swapping problem. Nayan still believed the switch happened because of a kiss, so she kissed him until they got carried away. Unfortunately, even after their passionate kiss, their souls remained trapped in each other's bodies. After that moment, Nayan and Unho talk about the attempt on Nayan's life and try to switch their souls back. But Unho, being innocent, is more interested in taking over Nayan's fancy house. Then, Nayan's first idea to catch the culprit is to make Unho, who's in her body, the manager of a team called the Underdogs. At that time, Nayan didn't lose her job, but she lost her manager title and has to start over. 
With their souls swapped, Nayan has to let Unho take over her role. Unfortunately, no matter how hard Unho tries, he can't act as cool as Nayan. He always looks cheerful. When Unho faces the boss of the underdog team, Young Ae, he gets really nervous. But he still convinces Young Ae to follow Nayan's orders. At that time, the underdog team begins to worry that Nayan is losing her grip on reality after a strange accident she experienced. As the days pass, Unho finds it really tough to be in Nayan's shoes. Things get even trickier for him when he has to tackle his very first job task, which is to come up with ideas for advertising grown-up toys. At the same time, Nayan, who is now in Unho's body, starts to take charge in a big way. Meanwhile, everyone is surprised to see Nayan acting super happy and kind, which isn't like her at all. Elsewhere, Yumi is put in charge of a project to market some fancy jewelry. After everyone on the team gives it their all, Yumi keeps turning down their suggestions. She's used to working with the very smart Nayan, so her standards are really high. Yumi is always looking for something even better, hoping to outshine Nayan. Then, Yumi was really upset because Chengwu was ignoring her all the time. Because of this, Chengwu started to dislike Nayan even more and wanted to ruin her life and career. The team nobody expected to win got to meet with the owner of an interesting shop that sells stuff for adults. The owner explained how his shop works. When they went to visit the shop, Unho did something mischievous. He tied handcuffs to his and Nayan's hands and kept the key for himself. Then he teased Nayan about it. But they ended up falling asleep together. And it looks like Unho might be starting to like Nayan. When their friends found out, they started teasing them right away. With his new body, Unho finally experiences his first period. Adjusting to life as a woman isn't easy at first. Simple tasks, like buying sanitary napkins, make him feel embarrassed. But from this experience, he gets an idea for his project. The next day, Unho presents his proposal to the client. Instead of having a pop-up store in a discreet location, he suggests selling adult toys openly, as buying them isn't illegal. The shop owner likes the idea, so they move forward to make it happen. Meanwhile, at the agency, Rex and Jenny worked closely with the art team to finish their design plans. But Yumi, who secretly resented Nayan, actually sabotaged their efforts. When the underdog team found a place for a pop-up store, Yumi stopped their plans by renting the same spot and paying more to the owner. At that time, the underdog team started feeling lost as the deadline approached without much progress on their project. So, they searched for a new location and settled on an abandoned medical shop. However, they couldn't reach the owner as they were on vacation. But after hearing from Rex about Yumi's sabotage, the team returned to the agency. Yumi was there and demanded Nayan and Unho to beg her if they wanted the sabotage to stop. But Nayan, in Unho's body, stood up to Yumi and said her actions hadn't hindered them at all. Then, on the big day of the pop-up store opening, Yumi was shocked to see her project lose out to the underdog team, who finished their project on time. They even got to use an old medical shop for free. Moreover, the design plan Yumi tried to sabotage was saved by Chengwu, helping them overcome last-minute issues and impress the client. After talking to Unho and finding out how they succeeded, Yumi hurried to confront the person she hired to harm Nayan. Seeing Yumi's actions, Nayan followed her to the meeting place in a taxi. When Yumi arrived, she got into a car with someone, and it turned out to be Mr. Numbiel, who had messed up the meeting. At that time, he had a recording of Yumi leaking a video about Exa Beauty, which caused Nayan to lose her job. Mr. Numbiel also threatened to expose Yumi if she didn't want to date him. But Nayan swooped in and saved Yumi just in time. She did this to gain Yumi's trust and get close to her for information. Pretending to be Unho, Nayan even said she'd team up with him to take down Nayan. Then, Nayan went straight to Mr. Numbiel's office and deleted all the recordings of Yumi from his phone, so he couldn't use them against her anymore. Later, Nayan told Unho about her plan and said she'd be working closely with Yumi for a while. The next day, Jaiha, the grandson of the Seji group leader, visited Sungsu's agency. He needed a team for a project. Yumi told him to choose his team, but Nayan had a different idea. She suggested they have a competition where teams present proposals, and Jaiha can pick the best one. Later, Nayan criticized Seji Soju products, saying they needed a new brand and image. Upon hearing that, Jaiha agreed and promised to choose the best proposal. To help, Unho's underdog team did a survey at local bars. Soon after, they discovered that people didn't like Seji Soju and wanted to know why. On another note, Yumi asked Nayan, who was in Unho's body, to meet a famous actor. They hoped to make him the face of their project. But the actor said no, mentioning his difficult history. Surprisingly, Nayan used a sneaky tactic. She got the actor drunk to get his fingerprints and made him sign a contract without his consent. 
Nayan knew he wasn't a great person, but since many people admired him, she was ready to do whatever it took, even if it meant doing something shady. Meanwhile, Unho, inside Nayan's body, stumbled home drunk and ran into Chung Wu, who wanted to chat. To Unho's surprise, Chung Wu confessed his feelings for Nayan, not knowing it was actually Unho inside. At the same time, Yumi took Nayan, in Unho's body, to the attic house. There, Nayan tried to seduce Yumi to get her to reveal the truth about the culprit. She even tried to kiss her. Similarly, Chung Wu attempted to kiss Unho, thinking he was Nayan. But Yumi, realizing what was happening, dodged Nayan's kiss, not fully trusting her. Meanwhile, Unho, aware of Nayan's peach allergy, managed to avoid Chung Wu's advances and left, taking peach tea from Chung Wu's car. At that time, Chung Wu tried to stop her when he realized Nayan was allergic to peaches, but it was too late. Unho began to experience a serious allergic reaction. Upon knowing that, Nayan, through Unho's body, directed him to where the allergy medicine was kept to ease the discomfort. The next day, Nayan was busy and kept ignoring Unho's calls. Annoyed, Unho decided to get back at her by dressing in flashy clothes and ruining Nayan's elegant image at the office. Meanwhile, the underdog team faced a new challenge as Jenny was offered a job as a content creator at another agency. She told her team she was leaving, but Unho tried to stop her when he learned the agency seemed suspicious. During a meeting with the agency head, Jenny was asked to sign a contract, unaware it was a trick. Shortly after, things took a dark turn when the agency boss blackmailed Jenny, demanding she perform a sexy dance for him. Fortunately, Unho swooped in just in time. Disguised as a powerful influencer, he claimed Jenny was under his protection, breaking her contract. Then, they made a quick escape, but the agency soon caught on and gave chase. Luckily, young AE and Rex managed to hold off the thugs, saving Jenny. Meanwhile, Nayan and Yumi teamed up with models for their project, while Unho led the underdog team to do their best. Finally, the big day arrived. Both groups presented their proposals, eager to impress. At first, Jae Ha was pretty impressed with Nayan and Yumi's decision to bring an actor on board as a brand ambassador. He even skipped the underdog team's presentation and declared Yumi's team the winner. But things took a wild turn when journalists barged in, questioning the actor about a drug scandal. Surprisingly, Nayan decided to expose her own actions, aiming to tarnish Yumi's image just like Yumi had done to her. At that time, Yumi had extended her contract with the actor, so she got caught up in the mess too. At the same time, Unho also figured out that Nayan had done all this to make sure the underdog team won. The next day, there was a big meeting with Sung Su and Seji officials. There, Yumi blamed Unho, who was in Nayan's body, for the contract mess. But it turned out Nayan had actually carefully planned everything, and the company even got some compensation out of it. In the end, the bosses gave Yumi a serious talking to about her team management skills, and her job was once again on shaky ground. At that time, Yumi also had to face Unho, who had been pretending to be Nayan all along. There, Unho made it clear that this was his strategy to win. Meanwhile, since Yumi's project got cancelled, Unho got the chance to present for the underdog team in front of Seji Company bigwigs. After doing surveys and brainstorming with the team, Unho explained that most people drink alcohol just for the buzz. But not everyone can handle it, especially young folks. So, Unho proposed changing Seji Soju into a non-alcoholic drink that still gives you that kick. Upon hearing that, Jae Ha and the board were super impressed with the idea, and they gave it the green light. Soon after, the underdog team threw a big bash to promote their product, pulling in Jenny, who's a social media sensation, to spread the word and get people to come. Shortly after, Nayan, feeling a bit distant, showed up at the party. Unho, seeing her, rushed over with two bottles, thinking they were something to drink together. But turns out, the bottles actually had real soju inside, courtesy of Yong Yi and Rex for their own party. There, Unho confessed he used to dislike Nayan for siding with Yumi. But now, knowing her true intentions, he's had a change of heart. They made up and were having a good time together. As they got a little tipsy, they shared a kiss, just as Chung Wu watched from a distance, feeling pretty jealous. After the strange events, Nayan, now in Unho's body, met Mr. Numbiel and Director Ji Ye, who had messaged her. But soon after entering the meeting room, she suddenly fainted. Meanwhile, Unho also fainted when confronting Chung Wu at Nayan's apartment. When they woke up, they realized their souls had switched back to their own bodies. Unho was relieved but puzzled about Nayan's visit to Director Ji Ye. Soon, he realized they might be blamed for trying to harm Nayan. At that time, Director G.A. saw potential in Unho after the previous incident, raising doubts about Yumi's position again. Unknowingly, it was Nayan's doing. 
Director Ji Ye wanted to strike a deal with Unho for future benefits, unaware of the truth. There, Unho agreed to help catch the perpetrator, hoping to clear Nayan's name. When Unho gets back to the apartment, he's overjoyed that their souls have switched back. But Cheng Wu, who's there, seems confused and reluctant to leave. He doesn't believe Nayan is dating Unho and wants to stay. On the other hand, Nayan and Unho are still puzzled about how their souls swapped. But Unho tells Nayan he's agreed to work with Director Ji Ye to help her. Meanwhile, Yumi turns to Director Ji Ye for help. They had teamed up against Nayan, but after Yumi failed, Ji Ye no longer supports her. Now that Nayan and Unho are back in their own bodies, they resume their roles. Nayan successfully rebrands her project and regains her position as manager. On the flip side, Unho stays with the underdog team, and Yumi is put in charge of leading them. Then, when Nayan gave out the project assignments, she gave the underdog team a tough one. Meanwhile, she took on a big project from HQ Motors herself. Later, Nayan reached out to HQ Motors executive since she was handling their marketing projects. But she discovered that director GA had been in touch with HQ Motors, and they wanted to work with him instead. On the flip side, Unho and the underdog team visit a sketchy motel. As soon as they step inside, it feels more like a haunted house. When they talk to the motel owners, they suggest some changes to make it more inviting, but the owners refuse to make any changes, leaving the team puzzled. Meanwhile, Nayan meets with HQ Motors representatives and tells them she'll be taking over director GA's tasks. But soon after, she gets a headache, a sign of another soul swap, as Unho feels the same. In the end, they swap souls once more. Nayan, now in Unho's body, ends up at the motel. She also reads Unho's message to director GA, which worries her. Eventually, Nayan asks the underdog team to put off their work for the day. Meanwhile, at HQ Motors, Unho, now in Nayan's body, feels confused. But he remembers director GA's instructions from their meeting the day before. At that time, director GA had asked Unho to sabotage Nayan's work. In exchange, director GA promised Unho a good position at headquarters. Upon hearing that, Unho agreed to the deal but wanted something more. So, in the end, Unho, in Nayan's body, decided to work on a project at HQ Motors, just as director GA had hoped. However, Unho kept this decision a secret from Nayan. When they got back to the apartment, Nayan insisted on kissing Unho, thinking it would return things to normal. After they kissed, their souls switched back to their original bodies. But Cheng Wu, who witnessed the incident, demanded an explanation from them, finding it hard to believe what had happened. As time passes, the swapping of souls between them starts to get more unstable. It happens again while Nayan and Unho are busy with their tasks. Nayan, in Unho's body, also works with the underdog team to finish their project. During this, the underdog team figures out why the motel owner refuses to change anything about the motel. It's because he wants to preserve the memories of his granddaughter, who made a lot of graffiti on the walls. She doesn't have parents anymore, and the owner wants to keep those memories alive. Understanding the owner's feelings, Nayan decides to market the motel with a retro vibe, cherishing the stories and memories within. However, Nayan has other commitments, so she leaves the project to the team. While leaving the motel, she checks Unho's messages and discovers that Unho is up to something with director GA. At that time Nayan started to feel like Unho wasn't telling her the truth. To clear things up, she arranged to meet with him. But just then, their souls swapped again, putting them back in their original bodies. In her own body, Nayan found herself at a flower shop, ordering flowers for a condolence message. However, Unho didn't answer any of Nayan's questions, making her more curious about his intentions and plans. What's more, Nayan learned that when Unho was in her body, he cancelled her project with HQ Motors and decided to take over the work in her name. This made Nayan suspect that Unho was up to something strange. Soon after, Nayan got a message from Unho asking her to meet him at the temple if she wanted to know the truth. When she arrived, she saw a photo of Unho with a girl named Duun, the same girl she saw in another photo at the attic house. Unho then told Nayan that they had actually met before she became a temporary lecturer at his campus. But he didn't explain more, just asking her to remember their first meeting and to be ready to apologize if she wanted forgiveness. At that time, Nayan realized that Unho had been hiding his true intention to get back at her for something she did in the past. She remembered how she had hurt him before and understood his anger. Then, Nayan remembered a time five years ago when she was working on a project with aromatherapy candles. She found out later that she had taken someone else's idea for the project. This idea had actually helped her a lot in her career at the Seji Group before she joined Songsu Agency. Meanwhile, Yumi got some information about Nayan's past from Mr. Numbiel, and she shared it at work, 
causing a lot of talk among their colleagues. Soon after, Nayan hurried back home to talk to Unho about everything that was happening. But Unho wasn't there, and she noticed that some of their investigation files were messed up. There, Nayan wondered if Unho had something to do with the aromatherapy candle project from her past. On another front, Unho is having a meeting with director GA to discuss the rewards he wants for their collaboration. There, he wants director GA to reveal the truth about some past events related to Nayan. Surprisingly, director GA already knows what happened and has evidence to prove it. But he'll only give Unho the evidence if Unho does his job to remove Nayan from the picture. The next day, it's Nayan's turn to meet director GA now. She wants to find out some things about him so she can control the situation, just like Unho. Nayan's main goal is to uncover the truth about who tried to harm her. In the end, Nayan realizes that the only way to make her wish come true is to have a powerful position in the company so she can investigate freely and deal with her enemies. Because of that, Nayan really wants to win the big project from HQ Motors. Then, she's up against Unho, who's representing the Seji group. Whoever comes up with the best marketing plan wins. But things get tense when they start feeling the signs of their souls swapping again, giving them both a headache. Eventually, their souls switch back. In the middle of all this, we see a glimpse of Unho's happy past with Duun. Turns out, she's a talented girl who makes aromatherapy candles despite not being able to walk. With Unho's help, they started a unique candle business called Bandy Candles, using ancient techniques to create special scents. At that time, Unho suggested to Duun that they should let the Seji group handle the marketing of their candles so they could reach more people. But Duun had a different view. She said that while it would be nice for many people to know about their candles, what would make her happiest is if just one person truly loved their product. This idea stuck with Unho, becoming his guiding principle in marketing. Driven by love for Duun and a desire to make her candles famous worldwide, Unho visited the Seji company. He hoped their experts could help spread the word about Bandy Candles globally. Unfortunately, Unho didn't follow the proper procedures, and he ended up getting kicked out by the guards. After their accidental collision at Seji, Unho and Nayan ended up mixing up their presentation files. At that time, Unho mistakenly took Nayan's files with him. Despite this, Nayan still managed to impress the executives with her proposal. Jaiha agreed to support her idea, but he wanted Nayan to find a special scent for her candle product to stand out in the market. Meanwhile, Unho realized his mistake when he couldn't find his proposal on the bus. He hurried back to Seji to retrieve it, but the security guard stopped him from entering. On the bright side, Nayan just finished her presentation. Her mentor, He Jung, praised her and predicted that Nayan would be promoted to lead the team once the project was completed. The next day, Nayan had been working hard on her project when she stumbled upon Duun's bandy candle proposal. She realized that the product used a traditional scent, just like the one she saw in Unho's files. Soon after, news spread that Seji's company was marketing a candle very similar to Bandy Candles, and it was doing well in the market. Unho and Duun were devastated to see their years of hard work destroyed. The situation worsened when a fire at the candle factory took Duun's life. Desperate for answers, Unho reached out to Nayan, suspecting her involvement in the theft of the Bandy Candle concept. However, Nayan claimed innocence and asked Unho to gather evidence to prove her innocence. In the end, Unho started to harbor a grudge against Nayan. He was determined to study marketing in college just to catch up to Nayan and hold her responsible for her past deeds. Fast forward to the present, after their souls switched back, Unho, now in Nayan's body, brings up an incident from five years ago. Meanwhile, Yumi overhears their conversation and realizes that they've swapped souls, explaining all the strange occurrences she'd noticed. Soon after, Nayan decides to double-check if she left any evidence when she took Bandy's candle idea. But now in Unho's body, she has to work under director G.A. When she learns that Unho is searching for evidence related to bandy candles, Nayan decides to go along with his plan to find the evidence. Meanwhile, Unho finds himself inside Nayan's body and needs help with a big project for HQ Motors. Luckily, he teams up with some unlikely friends, and together they discover that director G.A.'s marketing team stole some technology. But then, they find a small company that made the first liquid hydrogen battery in South Korea. Instead of giving credit to the small company, director GA's team steals the invention and says HQ Motors made it. They do this to make a deal with HQ Motors and make a lot of money. So, the plan is to sell this cool battery technology to HQ Motors and say HQ Motors was the first to use it. But Unho and his friends know the truth and want to stop the bad guys. Then, Unho, now in Nayan's body, remembers a sad event from five years ago when something important was stolen. He knows how awful it feels to lose something you worked hard for because someone took it without permission. Because of that, 
Unho decides to find out the truth and stop director Ji Ye's sneaky plans. On the big day of the presentation, Nayan, who's actually in Unho's body, surprises everyone by teaming up with Unho to stop director Ji Ye. During the presentation, Unho spills the beans about the liquid hydrogen battery technology. It turns out, it wasn't HQ Motors who made it, but a small company called Hijet Tech run by a person with a disability. This inventor struggled to get support for his cool invention. But thanks to Nayan, who was still in Unho's body, they bring the inventor to HQ Motors to show the truth. Later on, Unho suggested to the CEO at HQ Motors that they should buy not just the invention from Hijet Tech, but also its whole story and history. He thought it would make HQ Motors look really good and wouldn't hurt anyone. However, director GA wasn't happy about this idea, but the HQ Motors bosses thought it was smart. In the end, they got rid of director GA. Even though Nayan helped a bunch, Unho still couldn't forgive her for being stuck in her body. But then, before the big presentation, Nayan snuck into director GA's office and found a hard drive with evidence about something called the Bandy Candle case. Turns out, Nayan had hidden that hard drive a while back. Then, Nayan thought back on what happened and understood why Unho did what he did. So, she decided to help him take down director GA. The next day, they switched back to their own bodies. Nayan had gotten some evidence from director GA earlier, so she asked Unho to check it out on the hard drive. Unho found a recording of Nayan confessing something from five years ago. She explained that she was working on a project with aromatherapy candles but stumbled upon bandy candles. She wanted to work with them at first. However, He Jung and the CEO at Seji Group made it seem like bandy candles never existed. Then, Nayan asked He Jung about it, but He Jung just told her to forget about it. At first, Nayan tried to hide what happened, but she felt really bad about it. So, she made a video confessing and saying sorry. Then, she gathered all the proof and left it where an accident happened that took Duwen's life. She hoped someone connected to Duwen would find it and reveal the truth. But, director Ji Ye ended up getting the evidence. When Unho watched Nayan's video, he realized she was also a victim. Instead of telling the police, he gave the evidence back to Nayan. There, Unho felt lost because everything he'd worked for didn't matter anymore. He also felt bad for going after the wrong person for revenge. The next day, director GA and his team got fired because of what they did. Meanwhile, the underdog team got promoted to the top position at Sungso's agency. They'll be working closely with Nayan from now on. In the evening, Jaeha and Hee Jung talked about making Nayan a part of the board of directors as a reward for her hard work on the HQ Motors project. But while all this is happening, people are still looking for Nayan. Now she's worried that Hee Jung might have something to do with the attempt on her life. The next day, Unho decided to quit his job at Sungso's agency. He felt like he didn't belong there anymore. In the middle of all that, the underdog team invited Unho to the Sungsu agency for a workshop. While they were there, Chung Woo tried to tell Nayan how he felt again, but she turned him down. Later, Nayan went to Chung Woo's office to look for evidence. But then, the lights went out. At that time, Unho knew Nayan was scared of the dark, so he hurried to find her. At first, Nayan didn't want Unho's help, but he told her it's okay to ask for help and not pretend to be tough all the time. In the end, Nayan cried and said sorry to Unho for everything that happened. There, Unho also talked about how he felt during the time their souls were swapped and how he wanted revenge. But after being together with Nayan, he realized she wasn't so bad, and he started to like her. Then, they both apologized to each other, and their moment ended with a kiss. After everything that happened, Unho had a dream where he met Duwon. She told him to let go of her and move on happily. Meanwhile, Nayan, who had snuck into Chung Wu's office before, found a flash drive with CCTV footage from the shoe factory. It showed that Chung Wu was the person wearing the rabbit mask who tried to harm him. At first, Unho wanted Nayan to tell the police right away, but she had a different plan. She wanted Chung Wu to confess. In the end, Chung Wu admitted what he did in front of Nayan and Unho. He also said that He Jung was behind it all. There, Chung Wu also revealed that He Jung was behind stealing the bandy candle idea which helped his career. He said He Jung would do anything to become the CEO of Seji Group. But that's not all. He Jung is also responsible for Duwon's death. When rumors spread about Jae Ha being the Seji heir, He Jung wanted to cover it up for a promotion. Because of that, He Jung set fire to the Bandy Candle factory, killing Duwon, to distract from the rumors about Jae Ha. But turns out, He Jung was the one who spread the rumors about Jae Ha in the first place. She did it on purpose to get promoted. Now, Nayan's presence is a threat to Hee Jung, so she's trying everything to take her down, all while pretending to care about her. For a while, Hee Jung used Chung Wu's feelings to try to hurt Nayan. 
She thought if Nayan felt bad, Cheng Wu could comfort her and become someone she relied on. Then, at the shoe factory's opening ceremony, He Jung asked Jungi to scare Nayan. But things went wrong, and Nayan almost got hurt. Now, He Jung has another plan to get rid of Nayan for a promotion. But Eun Ho and the underdog team are ready to help Nayan fight back. Long story short, Nayan apologized to Yumi and explained that she got too caught up in her career and ignored her feelings. On the flip side, Yumi had been hoping for an apology. But she went too far and admitted she teamed up with He Jung to bring down Nayan. In the end, Yumi realized her mistake and said sorry to Nayan. The next day, Mr. Numbiel finally supported Nayan, and she forgave all his past mistakes. Finally, Nayan's team's hard work paid off. Then, just when He Jung thought she had won as CEO, Nayan exposed all her wrongdoings. There, Nayan revealed that He Jung was behind every bad thing that happened at Seji. From ruining Jae Ha's reputation to trying to kill Eun Ho's girlfriend. Even though Nayan was ambitious like He Jung, she chose to do the right thing and not let greed control her. When He Jung refused to admit her wrongdoing, Chung Woo stepped up and confessed to the police. He even said he was ready to testify against her. As he was being arrested, He Jung confessed to Eun Ho that she was the one who killed Da Woon and blamed Nayan for it. Upon knowing that, Eun Ho was upset, but Nayan stayed strong. Eun Ho told He Jung that Nayan wasn't as bad as she was. After all this, Eun Ho was still heartbroken over He Jung's confession about his first love's death. There, Nayan tried to comfort him, but Eun Ho said he needed time to deal with everything. He hugged Nayan and promised to come back someday. After they went their separate ways, Nayan started living a healthier life like Eun Ho always did. As time passed, Nayan went back to work with Yumi, who got promoted to manager. Now, Yumi had moved on from Chung Wu and had a boyfriend she wanted Nayan to meet. Skipping ahead, after a year in jail, Chung Wu apologized to Nayan when he got out. When Nayan returned to the office, the underdog team told her their client wanted to open a pop up store at a shoe factory nearby. Long story short, Nayan was in the park waiting for her client. When she heard someone coming, she told them they couldn't open a pop up store at the shoe factory because it breaks agency rules. But when she turned around, she saw Unho standing there. He appreciated that Nayan didn't want to use shady methods like she did before. Then, Nayan realized Unho was the new client she was waiting for. The story wraps up when Nayan asks for a big fee for her project. There, Unho says he'd give up anything for her, even his soul. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is if your client offers their soul as payment, maybe rethink your pricing strategy.